Hi, and welcome to this demonstration of this fantastic new tool we have in Photoshop CC 2014 called the Focus Area Tool. The tool uh, is really good at detecting uh, a range of sharpest pixels and allowing us to, to select them out to create a different image. What I have in front of me here is an image, and let me just go to the original right here that my student Jennifer Walton asked me to uh, show her if a good selection could be made and if she could uh, you know make something out of this image and I thought this might be a good candidate to try out the focus range but the background was a little bit out of focus like this leaf here is out of focus and the background more out of focus I wondered how it would handle that I know it might be able to handle a very sharp edge like here on the front of the flower but how would it handle this less focused area and then I went around and I looked and I found another image that I could use right here and it had an out of focus area in the background too so I thought oh, these would be pretty good to see how this focus range uh, tool works and it turns out it works remarkably well. The tool can be found under select and focus area right here and when you first load the tool you'll notice that its spinning wheel is analyzing the image it is a bit processor intensive and could take some time on a slower processor but what it comes up with right away is its interpretation of what it feels is the sharpest areas of the image it hasn't gathered all of them if I turn preview off and on you'll see that we want to include the leaves uh, and so I'll turn preview back on and before I move on I just want to show you that in preview it does give us different backgrounds or different masks to show us what we have selected and so I think um, maybe I'll work with the white background for now it seems to be showing me my edges right now pretty well and I'm just gonna take under parameters and in focus range I'm gonna dial it up in other words I'm gonna take over you'll see that auto was turned off and I've dialed it up it's not done a bad job but we're still missing some I'm gonna dial it up a little bit more it's still not quite there we'll dial it up a little more you gotta be careful and you see there it started including the background so we've gone too far so we're gonna to have to dial it down that's okay we do notice that it's missed some and that's not a problem if we find that it's missed an area we just grab this plus brush we have a plus and minus brush if we find that it's not quite accurate we can add or take away from our selection using these brushes and then using our square bracket keys first of all I just want to point out that sometimes the square bracket keys won't work right away just by hovering we actually have to cliff, click uh, somewhere on, on the image here and I want to click here because I don't want to do the selection yet I'm just going to click on the side here so that it's active here and so now my plus minus bracket keys actually make this much larger or smaller and just brush over the areas I want to add to my selection there a little bit there a little bit there and that's done a really good job of adding to the selection you will notice that down here some of the background is still showing through between and I've already discovered that using this tool isn't the best one for this situation uh, and rather than go through it I'm gonna just carry on and show you that this tool actually has a beautiful refine edge tool built right into it rather than making us go back up to select and refine edge and so you'll also see that our edges are a little rough they're not very good edges yet and so let's just go into the refine edge tool um, you can choose to soften edges you'll notice here this is a hard edge this is a softer edge I'm gonna give it a try without choosing soft edge because I am using the refine edge tool and I'm gonna click smart radius and I'm just gonna turn it up and see what happens see how it softened the edge on its own so I didn't really need to soften that edge this looks like it's making a pretty decent selection on its own let's turn it down let's turn it up a little let's just see how that's going what I'm looking for is you know getting good selection on the hard edges here and here on the outside of these bulbs but giving me still a bit of softness in the out of focus area now to deal with this area right down here let's zoom in just a bit and using this tool which is very similar to the add selection tool from our uh, focus area selection and again uh, sorry just clicking first 
outside here to give me my control of my bracket keys I'm just gonna make it a little smaller and I'm just gonna slide right up in the middle of that and see how it created a selection out in the middle there I'm just gonna go right along there it's done a really good job right there of creating my selection let's say I had gone over a little bit and I made those hairs white what I could do about that is just press my alt or option key and it turns my little selection circle into a minus and I'll just subtract away from these hairs and it'll automatically bring them back as kind of greenish selections they're actually hairs so I think that's pretty good controller command zero to bring us back I like what I'm seeing but generally what I do when I'm creating a selection is I want to output this as a new layer with a layer mask this time though I'm going to choose it just as a selection just to begin to work with selections so we'll click OK and I'll show you what we can do with that so now it's an active selection and we know that because of the marching ants they tell us we have an active selection what I want to do is create a, uh, an adjustment layer and I want to control brightness here and, and you'll notice if we have an active selection and we chose an adjustment layer it by default you can see right here puts that selection into a mask for us and that's pretty ideal and right now if I slide the adjustment you'll see it's adjusting the foreground what we had created as a selection I actually want to adjust the background first the easiest way for me to do that is while my mask is highlighted choose the controller command I key and it will invert that make a perfect inversion of that mask and so now I can and so now I can control the foreground and so I am going to click on my adjustment icon right here and then go into my brightness and tone it down a bit there something like that you'll notice there's a little problem with the color and kind of a pixelization you can see if I turn it down a lot kinda it's doing a weird thing here and I'm not gonna worry about that but I'm gonna show you how I fix that in just a minute so let's go from this point and go back to the background we'll put that in there now I want a new adjustment layer but I want to adjust just the brightness of the foreground so in order to do that let's take an adjustment layer let's choose our brightness again now it's gonna load it because we didn't have our selection active it's gonna load it with a blank mask we don't want this mask we're gonna delete that mask carry it down to the trash can say yes delete the mask and what I'm gonna do is alter option click and drag down this mask and you'll see that it duplicates that mask for us creates a duplicate copy now right now it's just going to do the same thing if I adjust the brightness here it's going to do the background which we don't want I'll double click on brightness and it zeroes me back out I'm going to invert this mask back control or command I and now I can use this adjustment layer let's click on this icon again to give us our adjustment and turn the brightness up and so that's done a really nice job there of giving us our, our brightness we turn that up nicely um, I like that actually quite a bit there we go maybe you give it a bit of contrast a little more brightness okay so we're gonna accept that and there we have a, our two brightness adjustments and let's say I also wanted to do a saturation adjustment um, I no longer have an active selection to get my active selection back off this mask all I need to do is control click the mask it'll bring back the selection of this mask I'll highlight my background choose let's say a saturation adjustment so it's gonna load a saturation adjustment with the mask because we had an active selection and I'm able to turn up the saturation just a bit makes it a lot better and finally we'll go back to the background I'm gonna to choose to use the patch tool which you'll find under the healing brush down here it looks like a patch and to use this tool I'm simply gonna go around the area I want to patch a little bit loose kind of in the shape that it already is and drag find a nice area to replace it with and drop I'll control D to deselect my selection and that's done a really good job of getting rid of that area
So now if we look at before and after, I'll just press the Alter option. There's before, and there's an after. And it's done a really nice job of creating a very realistic uh, image there with the selection. Let me move on. I'm going to show you something a little bit different in this image. We have an angel. We have a lot of similar tones, an area that's not quite, it's still pretty fuzzy back here. Uh, it's not that sharp. Uh, our quick select tool would have some troubles in certain areas in this and um, using our color range tool would have a horrible time because there's uh, no distinct color range difference and some of the value ranges are too similar and it would jump all over the place. But we do have an out of focus background with a fairly in focus foreground. So this time what I'm going to do is what a lot of people do, I'm going to duplicate the background uh, because I want to apply a layer mask directly to this background. Uh, and this is just another way. There's, it's not a right or wrong. It's the way some of you may be familiar with. While I have that layer highlighted, I'm going to go into Select Color or pardon me, not Color Range. Uh, select in our new Focus Area Selection. It's doing its math in the background again. Our little wheel is spinning around, it's thinking very hard about what's in focus and what's not. And it's going to tell us what it thinks is the sharpest areas of our image. And it's going to uh, put a mask around everything else. There. And so we can see by turning on and off our preview that it hasn't selected everything, but not to fear. Just to show you, our preview does a lot like the Refine Edge tool, and it gives us a number of selections down here. And in this case, uh, I think on white is giving us a pretty good look at what our selection is going to be, so we'll leave that. Under Parameters, we're going to just dial it up a bit and see if it gives us a little more. I'm telling it to choose a little bit more range and it's done a pretty good job. It's grabbed that out of focus area although it has a hard rough edge. We can deal with that in a minute. It's missed this one spot so we're going to go into this plus tool. I'm just going to click out here so I get control of my square bracket keys on the keyboard so I can actually make this tool larger the right square bracket key and brush over that area it missed and we'll see that it fills it in nicely. It adds that to the selection. And now what I'd like to do is refine the edge of my mask to try and get that soft focus back in. And so Refine Edge is right in, built into this tool. It's wonderful. And we can go right away to our Smart Radius and begin to make an adjustment. And it's going to detect. And you can see right away it softened that edge for us made it look a little bit more like it was out of focus, but maintain the sharpness of this edge. And so now I'm going to accept this. Now I can accept it as a selection, or I can accept it as a new layer with a layer mask. I'm going to do that. There we have a new layer with a layer mask, and if I turn off the background, you can see by our checkerboard that it's a trans it will become a transparent layer if I apply the mask to the layer. It still is, but it has a nice mask, and it's actually given us our soft edge. So what do we do with this? Well, let's say I want to put this on a new layer. I've created a new, new layer over here, and I, I've put a colored background on it just so that we can see. So I'm just going to take this highlighted layer. I'm going to use my Move tool. I can either click up here on my Move tool or press V. The V tool will toggle this to the Move tool. And I'll click and drag this to my tab at the top. And click and drag and drop it here. It has a different depth than the original, but I don't mind. I'm going to accept that. And you'll see there's a much larger image. And so in order to work with this, I need to do a, a transform. And so if I control minus out of here enough, I'll see my transform edges. Or if I don't, I can press Control or Command T, and it's going to show me my transform tools. One of the easiest ways I've discovered to adjust a trans or to transform it is if I click it, click my transform tools, we look up at the top here, and we have all kinds of different things. All you need to be concerned about is two things. One is click the link. That means when I slide this adjustment on width or height, it will maintain the aspect ratio. So watch what I do. If you see the little scrubby slider right here over the W, I can click and slide to the left and it'll make my window smaller. Just be careful. And I can click Enter to accept that. 
And just to see it a little better, let's just control plus or control zero to full screen it. And while I'm on this layer and I still have the move tool, I'm just going to grab that layer and I'm going to move it into place where I want it. There we go. What some of you might notice is at the top here, there's a little bit of a line. On some of your monitors, you might not see that, but it didn't do a perfect job of making that selection. I can very simply fix that because a mask is using black and white by painting black on my mask over that line. And to show you that better, if I press Alt or Option while I'm hovering over my mask, it will show the mask in my view right there. And what I want to do is paint this up here all black. So I'm going to grab my paintbrush tool right here. Make sure my opacity and flow are at 100% and that my foreground color is black. To switch to my foreground color, I can click my arrows or I can simply use the X key on my keyboard to switch. When my foreground color is black, I'm simply going to go right onto my mask and paint black on that portion of my mask, like I did right here, you can see. And by pressing Alt or Option and clicking on the mask again, it'll go back to the other view and you can see that I have eliminated that little line that was showing. So there you have this with a mask on a new layer on a background. And um, that has helped me take an image from one layer to a completely new background. I hope you found that helpful and I hope that the focus uh, selection tool under uh, select and focus area becomes one of those tools you experiment with when you see you've got a distinct in focus or reasonably in focus foreground from an out of focus and has some detailed background. Um, like I had mentioned, this doesn't seem to work with a very smooth background, but seems to work best when there is detail in the background, but it is quite out of focus. So thanks a lot.